Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is G. Cole, and welcome to Homegrown, where I get to share with you some good music while talking to some great people. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do, so we can keep you updated when new material is available. We will be posting new episodes bi-weekly. Also, check out the website Homegrown with G. Cole to listen and for all things Homegrown. We're also very, very interactive. Please follow me on Twitter, on Instagram, and on Facebook at my G. Cole. Hello, world. My name is G. Cole. Let's get into a couple of questions. I've lately, I'm not, I, you know, I'm, I'm not on this side of the microphone. I'm the one asking the questions. But uh, go ahead. Why did I start the podcast? <laughs> the podcast itself came about kind of organically. I, I I I had recording equipment of home at home from you know my last projects and so forth that I did, and. I, I know that right now I'm not headed back in the booth to create music. So the equipment was there and, um, you know, I just decided that I've had to do something with it, but I just couldn't figure out what. And I remember having a conversation once. My my father was getting ready to, to retire and I wanted to make sure that he was good. So we we're setting up investments and, you know, getting ready to have a, have a conversation with the financial um, advisor and so forth. And in having conversations with friends too, I realized that though my dad wasn't set is the word I'm going to use, he was good. And many people, their parents weren't. So in talking to the financial advisor, I said, hey, listen, do you mind if I share the conversation? And he said, no. And um, so we did. We recorded it. And though that's what inspired the um the the podcast. It wasn't the first episode recorded. Um the first episode we did was mental health in the community, where we spoke to a licensed mental health professional. I'm a huge Dennis Brown fan. So the next episode was me featuring Good Vibrations. Um, one of my favorite Dennis Brown albums, but more so one of those albums I, I've never heard anybody talk about. Never. So, you know, we got into that. And then I had uh we did sex trafficking where we spoke to somebody who was a victim of sex trafficking and now champions the, 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 the cause to fight against it and to help restore rights and so forth to those people who fell victim of it. Um, because a lot of times it's not just those who were victims of sex trafficking. You know, some people are forced into certain avenues of it, servitude or contributing to the actual crime. And, um, you know, they're prosecuted for that too. You know, so a lot of people um, are out there doing time and, and, and have penalties, you know, for things that they were forced to do. So she's out there fighting for that. And, you know, that was an interesting episode. We did the the, the, the sexual um, harassment in the workplace. We did, what else? We did uh, talking to teenagers. Um, you know, the teenagers feel so misunderstood. We decided to talk to a mic up five teenagers um, and boys and girls ranging age 14 to, to 17 at the time. And we spoke to a, an educator also. Um, you know, we've been doing stuff like that. Other episodes, charity. I had a, there's a charity organization that some friends of mine formed, and I'm a part of that. So I was inspired to do an episode based on that also. Um, juvenile justice, we did one of those. Immigration law, so we brought an immigration attorney in, and we had that conversation. Um, but again, my background being music, can't get away from it. You know, I, I, I always love talking to musicians. I, I When I go on YouTube right now, it's to watch interviews of most of my favorite musicians. And the content, there's a lot of content out there. I don't think there's a lot of great content out there. But for me, as a fan of the artist, there's this, you know, I always said, yo, if I ever got the opportunity to sit down and talk to that artist, this is what I would want to hear, want to know. You know, and um, of course, being my background is music, I get to interact sometimes with these artists in some way, shape or form. And my first musical guests I had on, I had Hope Dan Lindo on. His story is amazing. So I shared that on the podcast. We had singing Melody on, Richie Daly from Third World, um, Leela Ike, one of the rising young songstresses. She's on there too. 
And um, and that's when it was all audio, you know, just audio podcasts available on iTunes, Spotify, TuneIn, Google Play, iHeartRadio, wherever. Um, we're up there. And now being downloaded in over 48 countries and um, every single day, you know. So it's it's a lot of work, but it is. It's good work. It's work that I love and it's work that I'm proud of. So, wow. That's tough to answer. I write the show. I produce the show. And I host the show. So I'm going to be honest with you. For the most part, I speak to people who I am a fan of and who I really want to talk to. And I say a fan of, it doesn't necessarily mean just music. You know, from whatever avenues that they they, they they engage in on a daily basis, be it community service, be it attorneys, be it whatever, you know. I, I talk to the people I want to talk to. Uh, yes, I've had a lot of information sent my way and requests for interviews, and I haven't done them all. Because sometimes I, if I pull up the music and it doesn't move me, it's going to be a challenging conversation to have. So for those people who I've spoken to thus far, they're all people I, I, I was moved by their work, intrigued by their work. Um, loved their work. So as a result, I really wanted to talk to them. And, um, you know, so it's, it's, it's really tough to say who. What episode stands out the most? Um, I just had a conversation with Nesbeth, the artist Nesbeth. And, you know, if you've known his story and stuff like that, he's been through a lot of challenges uh, from losing his sister, losing his wife. You know, young wife. And um, just the way he responds, you know, the way he carries himself. Not shaken, not stirred, but motivated to keep sharing love. And I'm talking about when, when we go back into the, the backstories of Nesbeth, it's a lot of trauma from a long time ago. And it amazes me the type of individual he is um, as a result. So that's one that stands out to me. Um Another one that I would say stands out to me is because I've just been overall such a huge fan was the Marcia Griffiths interview. It was it wasn't the longest. Um, you know, we were asked to come and stream live backstage from the, the Mother's Day show with her and Glenn Washington. But Marcia Griffiths is somebody I've been in love with and in love with her work since I was a boy, you know. So. I really was looking forward to that. And um, I have this vinyl this e this lp that i got from my father um and i just wanted i said to i said to a friend of mine man i can't wait to meet marcia griffiths and i'd met her a couple times but i mean in an, in an environment where i have it present and i can get her to sign it and so forth i wanted to sign it for me and blah 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 and, and that came to fruition so yeah that episode does stand out who, the kidnap situation we're gonna be sitting up for two hours we're gonna talk about everything two hours is not enough well, you said it, and it's on, it's on video, so. <laughs> so we'll go for four. We can do that? How about doubling it? So, I'm, I'm, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I'm getting excited. You see, it's this is a journey, 54 years, you know? So we can't wrap it up in a couple of hours. No. What we should probably do is one a week. Yes. All right. You sounds heard more, it. Sounds more like it. <laughs> when I'm on here by myself, I don't get no hearts, but Marissa Griffiths is on and it's all hearts and all them things. I'm not, I'm not a hater or nothing. Look here. <laughs> Who was I most excited to speak to thus far? Probably Marissa Griffiths. Yeah. Richie Daly from Third Row. I always love having a conversation with. He's a good friend of mine um, and mentor. So I love having conversations with him. Singing Melody is a good version of mine. Um, and though I'd known him for years, I'd never sat down and had the singing melody story told to me. You know what I mean? And I ask the questions that I think I would that I know I'd love to hear the answers to. And I think that the audience would 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 love to get some answers to, you know. Barry Hammond. There's certain people who are the gold standard. Or they're definitely the gold standard when it comes to, and I'm not even going to say reggae music, but music, as far as I'm concerned. Um, Marcia Griffiths, Barris Hammond, Jimmy Cliff. You know, but I am a huge, huge, huge Barris Hammond fan. And um, 
you know, a lot of times when you hear interviews from some of these artists, it's it's very surface. You know, and and nine times out of ten, it's focused. It's based on whatever it is is going on right now. So, for example, they have an an album coming out. It's it's regarding that album, or they just got off a tour and it's regarding that tour. But nah, man, I want to know from you know, talk to me about way back. You know, I I always ask people that question, and you know, all the artists that I talk to. Talk to me about when you were a kid growing up. Because I remember when, as a kid growing up, how music affected me and how my life then affected who I am now, you know? So I wanted to, I wanted to know, you know, or I want to know. Talk to me about when you were a kid, the first recording. Why are you doing this? You know what I mean? Um, What do you listen to? You'd be amazed and so forth. So a lot of times I'm just a kid in a candy store when I'm having a conversation with these artists, you know? Um, So to answer the question, I'm I'm very much looking forward to the Barry's Hammond to do an interview, a, a nice sit down with with Barry's Hammond, you know, so I can pry and research. You know, I like researching from the source and not necessarily from the, the some friend of the source or or the internet. Um, what's the feedback been thus far? Extremely positive. People have loved it. As an artist, I did. Hundreds and hundreds of interviews. I won't call names, but I could probably tell you that maybe it was four of them that were good. Because many people who are behind the microphone now aren't journalists. They're not trained. And and, and when I say training, it's not all about formal training. It's about studying the greats. There's no better person for you to study if you're going for a job than the one that did it before you. Right? So those who did it well, I studied I listened to, you know, and that's how I learned how to do what I do. But but the feedback has been very, very positive. People just love the way it's done. Because guess what? There's a lot of content out there that's not quality content. That's the answer. I, I, I There's tons of content out there that's not quality content. And in in, in, in this day and age... Especially when all the other genres, they have the same issue too, you know, in terms of, you know, negative content out there. And sometimes it's not even about negative content as much as it is about non-beneficial content, so to speak. But reggae needs the push. We need the drive. You know, it's like when you talk about kids in school that are failing and you're you know, your child will say, well, it's not just me, such and such. I don't care about such and such. Parents have money. He'll probably be all right. You know? Or, you know, they've got a family business. So while he might not be academically inclined, you can see he'll probably be, you know, working at the welding shop or the carpenter shop or the, or, or the laundromat that his family owns and operates. So the, you're not on the same playing field. You're not working with the same set of cards, you know? So, so, excuse me. So, you know, we as reggae fans, musicians, creators, curators, consumers, and critics, because that we are very good at, um, we got to contribute to the content that's put out there. Uh, To some degree, control the narrative is what I'd say. So we can control the narrative. And again, I'm a fan, man. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. So I just love seeing quality content. If you see me on YouTube, for the most part, I'm not necessarily listening to the music because I can get that on iTunes. I have Apple Music, you know, and I and I have a, a, a large CD collection, a, a, a fairly decent record collection. And, and, you know, again, Apple Music and all and Spotify and all that stuff. So I'm on there just indulging in the history and um, the behind the scenes and stuff like that of the artists within the industry that I love so much. My background, corporate. I'm a corporate guy and no shame in that. I'm a corporate guy. So I've been in sales and marketing for a long time and for the last six or so years, staffing. I've been a regional manager for a huge staff, staffing company um, for the state. So I say that to say I'm in the people business, 
however you translate it, from sales to marketing to staffing, it's all the people business. And the only way that those businesses thrive is through your engagement with people. All right. Um, so I'd like to consider myself an expert at people. But marketing is very, very important. I tell this to artists all the time. Um, companies right now, if you do the research, a lot of companies spend way more money on marketing than they do on product development. Because it makes no sense to develop a product and don't market it. Or you're going to have a warehouse full of dope stuff. You know what I mean? So it's about getting the image out there and, again, controlling that narrative. So what I always try to explain to the artist is this. Listen, this is 2018. All this music that you create and put your heart and your blood, sweat, and tears in creating. These kids could have this music before the album hits the streets and you have no clue how they got it. So what you have to do is they have to connect with you. And I learned this being out there on the road sometimes and just performing myself. They can have the music, you know. Sometimes you're trying to sell CDs, physical CDs. Bears Hammond's album coming out October 13th. Um, a very good album, by the way. Um, but you're trying to sell your CDs and so forth to people who are probably not going to put a CD in. But they'll buy it because they are trying to connect with you. They're at the venue. You just came off stage. Gave a ridiculous performance. Great performance. Excellent performance. They're purchasing the memorabilia. The t-shirt. The hat. The lighter. The mug. The album. To connect with you. They're taking a piece of you. Home. Not necessarily the music. Alright. Might be a, 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 a bruise to the ego. But it's not, it's not about the music. Yes the music. The music gets them engaged. Yes absolutely. No question. But when they buy it in this day and age, it's really about you. So that's what I tell people a lot of times. And there are a lot of people who wanted to sit down for 10 minutes and five minutes and so forth. And I have to explain that to them. And then we sit down for an hour and a half. You know, a lot of people have a story to tell. And that a lot of time is what sells stuff, especially music, especially the arts, anything that's a luxury. You know what I mean? Anything that you're buying it because you want it and you like it, you love it, but it is not a need. It's the story. It's the story. So that's why we've grown so much visually over the past couple of months. You know, we start off with one camera, then we go to two, then we go to three, and we change up the whole place so that we can accommodate more people. You know, the whole band, if we have a band in here and comfortably and everybody's captured. And I'm always focused on the audio and, 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 and stuff like that, too, to make sure everything is together the right way. It's because everybody's on Facebook. Everybody's on YouTube, Facebook more than anything else. 
And when you go live, you can capture people that way, you know, instead of trying to find them all across yonder, let's find them where they're at. They're on Facebook and it's worked out great. Worked out great for the, for the artists, worked out great for us. All right. And I always end by saying, keep it moving, keep it grooving. It is homegrown. And there you have it. Thank you so much for tuning in. It has indeed been a pleasure. Remember, be safe, be kind, and be good to each other. My name is G. Cole, and this is Homegrown.